Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Ron Kisen Stevenson. Good evening. So, when I was a child, there was a sandlot in my backyard, and my friend Ramy used to come over. His mom used to come to visit my mom, and we'd sit out there, and we would build the most elaborate forts. And he'd he'd bring his GI Joes, and we would build these elaborate sets. Now, when I say elaborate, we had bricks, we had we had dirt, we had what was our disposal, what was at our disposal, but. To us, uh, we were so engrossed in our creation uh, that we would just spend hours setting up these uh, these forts, setting up the GI Joes. Uh, each one of them uh, had their role to play. Barbie dolls would uh, be the medical crew, and uh, we would have just we would just be engrossed in this. And then, inevitably, at some point, there would be a voice from the back door, Ramy. Ramy, it's time to go now. We have to eat dinner. <laughs> and Ramy would say, of course, but mom, we haven't started playing yet. We just finished setting up. <laughs> well, Ramy, well, what have you been doing out there for two and a half hours? <laughs> Indeed, what were we doing out there? And, and in that moment, we had not noticed the passing of a second. Now, that also brought to mind another thought when I was recollecting this. When my wife was diagnosed with stage four cancer, uh, 11 years ago now, um, I remember her saying to me, so when do we really, we waited all these years, we worked so hard all this time, just when I thought, we were ready to start enjoying our life, this happens. So when is it that we really begin to enjoy our lives and get to be present in our lives? It seems I had that ability when I was a child. What did I have then that isn't so easy to have today? And are there moments today that I do still have this. Well, you know, right now, with the pandemic still going on around us, we often have these feelings of isolation and uh, feelings that the accustomed routines have been changed and we feel like we're losing something sometimes. Um, I think that, you know, the inability to get up and go into a restaurant or, you know, to, to you know, have an appointment to meet a friend, um, it seems as though our sole objective in life up to now was just to get from here to there, to have something to put on the calendar and get there. So... Why is it we didn't notice the passing of two hours when we were building forts and castles, and yet the hours drag when we're sheltering at home? Uh, one of the effects of isolation that I found um, on me at times is a sense of inertia. Of course, there are many ways in which it hits us, but um, for example, I bought all the exercise equipment I need. Don't have to go to the gym anymore. And then I took a two week break. <laughs> and that's what happened. And then through inertia that stretched into a month. Uh, when I have a task to do, it tends to get procrastinated these days. What is this? What is this inertia? It, it sort of feels like a kind of force weighing down on you. Sometimes you might feel, or I, 
kind of overwhelmed by things. Uh, as though you have this weight on you and it takes a mammoth effort to overcome. Sometimes it's just a general sense of numbness uh, and a lack of a sense of agency. This is, these are some of the things that I felt. Um, but of course I understand as a good Buddhist that this is just a temporary habituated mental state. Uh, so I, I could inquire into it and ask what emotions it evokes, memories, associations. Uh, I know people seek psychoanalysis to help unravel these, but I don't see the devil as being in the details because associations can be broken don't always need to be unraveled. I think the important point is to be honest with ourselves, to see it as fully as we can and to move on from a state of habituated response to a state of presence, a stateless state, if you will. Um, flipping a switch from stagnation and negative thinking can be gratitude, acceptance, satisfaction, and most of all, I find a presence. Um, going out in nature does it for me. Uh, many of you may have interests, musical interests, or perhaps you like to do puzzles. Um, or you are an artist, or you write, and you notice this is your sandlot, and this does it for you. But it seems as though society wants to put us in the passive position. So many of us out there are not prepared for isolation, because we seek satisfaction. Society conditions us to chase satisfaction. Or is it satiation? Is it really satisfaction? And it conditions us to expect certain things, and when they don't happen, why well, we buy more things to make them happen but we're chasing a chimera, we're chasing a ghost. It's a Pavlovian response. Uh, so what does real satisfaction come from? I guess you might say it comes from accomplishment on one hand, or just the joy of being. Now, even accomplishments are short-lived. But there are times that we set an objective for the joy of doing it. And the doing it is what matters. And yes, when we were setting up for our GI Joes, absolutely, we didn't care what the end result was or if we ever got to play with. Same thing when I spend hours playing music with other people and don't realize where the time went or when you're writing or doing whatever you do that's creative. It's acting without acting, responding in mutual engagement with what is present around us. So I don't know if there's a lesson in this or not, I think that um, for me, it can be as simple as a cup of tea, making a cup of tea. Um, when I was young, I studied this system called the silver method. And they used a, uh, a hand gesture, putting the three fingers together as such. So that mudra would be used as a trigger to trigger the alpha state of mind. So I think that if we can condition ourselves to salivate, 
at some secondary reinforcement, I think we can act with clearer vision and more discerning clarity, reflect on our behaviors and see through the illusion of our attachment to form. Thank you.